Good morning, Sunday Schoolers. I'm so happy that you have joined me today. Thank you for being uh, with us today. We're going to be talking about peace and purpose today. So let us pray and we will get started. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you, God, for giving us strength. Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for giving us relatively good activity of our, our limbs, Lord Jesus, but most of all for giving us purpose, God. I pray that as we go into this word today, that you implant a great purpose and design for our lives into our minds and our hearts. Dig it deeply, Lord Jesus, so that it can sprout and grow into our lives and into our daily walk. We thank you for everything you've done. We're ready to be sent. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. And at the end of that prayer, I said, we are ready to be sent, meaning it is time. It is time. You are here on purpose. I say that a lot. And today we are going to look at a very simple passage, but we are more so going to work on what is behind what we're looking at. So we're going to be coming today from Philippians. And this is, uh, all of Philippians is written by Paul. And he's writing to churches. And he's writing from a state of um, what the world would consider torment or um, confinement because he's in prison. So for him to write these letters and urge the people to live for Christ and urge the people to live great lives for Christ, he has to be in an intended place in order for that to occur. So we're going to start in Philippians and we're going to read the intro first because I know that I said we always read the intro first. But before we do that, I haven't had my coffee today. I plan to have a tea and I wanted to say I wanted to plug my teas every once in a while. So I do a, a basic herbal tea at least two or three times out of the week. And I realize that it cleanses my palate. And what we want to do is we want to go into our passages with a cleansed palate. Why? Because it gives us opportunity to take in new things. You ever read the passage about um, old wine skins? You can't put new wine into old wine skins. So you have to unpack. My mentor used to tell me that all the time. You have to unpack. It's like packing for a vacation. You have to unpack um, some of the things and lay your burdens to Christ so that he can impart new things on you. So I, I don't know why I tied my tea in today with that, but the tea helps to kind of cleanse my palate a little bit. And so I'm able to be refreshed and renewed and um, I will more than likely have my tea when I'm going into my own devotion, my own personal devotion, which is not separate from here. It's along the same lines. However, I wanted to bring you the word first. Uh, I'm going to go have my tea and have my time and then we'll go forward. But we are coming from Philippians. We're going to read our intro as we, um, as I told you a long time ago, you always want to get the reference from where the scriptures are coming from so you know what setting it is, so you know how to apply it. So this, the purpose of this passage in Philippians, if you're reading from the beginning of your Bible, the intro is usually at the beginning of each chapter. So the purpose is to thank the Philippians for the gift they had sent Paul and strengthen these believers by showing them the true joy that comes from Jesus Christ alone, being content in Christ alone. The author is Paul. The original audience is the Christians at Philippi. And it was written approximately A.D. 61, so 61 A.D., from Rome during Paul's imprisonment, imprisonment there. So Paul was um, imprisoned in Rome at this time when he was writing these letters. So you're getting a letter from, um, you're reading a live letter from a man in jail. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm sure some, some watching this have received a, a letter from family member, friend, loved one in jail. So they're very passionate letters. <laughs> So the setting is Paul and his companions began the Church of Philippi on this on their second missionary journey. This is the second time around. And if you need a point of reference, that's in the book of Acts, specifically um, chapter 16, 11 through 40. So this was the first church established on the European continent. 
the Philippian church had sent a gift with Epaphroditus, one of the members, to be delivered to Paul. Paul was in a Roman prison at the time. He wrote this letter to thank them for their gift, to encourage them in the, and to encourage them in their faith. So that's the reference. When you're reading Philippians, it's about four chapters and we're going to be coming from chapter four today. Um, he's writing this in a state where he's imprisoned and he's already completed two missions, two missions on behalf of his purpose, um, on behalf of Christ through his purpose. So this is Paul persecuting Christian Paul has now gone on two missionary journeys and is now imprisoned. And he's in such a state of contentment that in such a state of uh, purpose that none of this is phasing him. His circumstances are not phasing him, but we won't get to the juicy part until after we read our passage. So if we get to Philippians 4, we're going to read 1 through 6. It says, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stay true to the Lord. I love you and long to see you, dear friends, for you are my joy and the crown I receive for my work. I'm going to go over. Now I appeal to Yudia and Sintech. Please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. And I ask you, my true partner, to help these two um, women, for they work hard with me and telling others the good news they work along with clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are written in the book of life so he starts with his greetings and then he's telling auntie and sister over here stop arguing we have greater work to do so if you've ever read a letter from afar or even from someone who's in prison, they want to make sure everything is right on the outside. So that's basically what he's doing in his greeting. We get down to verse number four and it says, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So reading through the very beginning of Philippians chapter, chapter 4, we are really seeing that though Paul's circumstances has set him in a place of imprisonment, a place of confinement, a place of torment, a place that was meant to bound him by chains, literal chains, because they didn't have handcuffs back then. Um, literal chains were to bind him. Weapons were formed against him. They did not prosper because he still got the word of God and his purpose and his mission out through um through his letter to the church of philippi and when we read letters like this or we read different passages through the bible some passages are um meant to teach us a lesson and some things we re reflect on in this particular letter we are to glean um the underlying message which is paul's triumph through adversity paul's um intended purpose that he's pursuing even from what's considered to be a place of bondage a place where he's considered to be bound so you may be in a position right now where you feel like you're not qualified enough or you're not ordained or you're not in position enough to be that encouragement or whatever the case may be or maybe you may not even know what your purpose is but you are here for a reason and what i admonish to you is that in reading Philippians and reading the study that I'm going to give you at the end of Sunday school for us to do for the rest of the month. Um, ask God in this time frame, what is your purpose? Why am I here? If you don't already know, and if you do know, get to work, get to work. We got things to do. The Lord is coming soon, as Paul has said. And we're born 
um, living into days where our purpose is needed. So when those things are activated and ignited in your spirit, God is saying, go, you're ready. You've accepted me as your, uh, um, you've accepted me as your creator. You've accepted my ultimate sacrifice as your salvation. Now I'm ready to send you in purpose to go, whether you are an encourager, whether you're an, a missionary, whether you have, a, um, a life that is of preaching and teaching, whether you just have a life of being um, that influence on your job or that influence in your marriage or that, that influence in your network of people, you have people and you have people that you have to rule over. You have people that you have territory um, and you may not think so, but just stop and think for a second and look around at all of the opportunities that you have to let you let the essence of who you are shine to other people those are your people those are the people that you have to influence greatly whether it be your uncle or your cousins or um, classmates or your family your immediate family say you stay with your aunts and uncles say you say you stay with your parents or even if you live alone and you spend every Sunday afternoon with a group of a small group of friends. Those are your people. Those are the people that are influenced by the very presence of who you are. Like when you are around, they glean something from you. So in that, you find your purpose. And I want you to spend this month just praying about what your purpose is. And if you know what it is, ask God how you want to, um, how he wants to use you mightily. Because he's just waiting for you to ask. Um, he's going to move you forward in it regardless of whether you ask or not. But it's always great when you finally humble yourself to the cross and ask. Because then he starts to unfold these things and show you. So in this passage, you see that Paul is operating in his purpose regardless of the chains that have bound him. Regardless of the situation that he is in. You may think, okay, well, I'm not as eloquent of speech. Or I don't have a degree to then teach. Or um, I'm not in the position to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. This in um, verse number four, it says, always be joyful in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. So you're always being joyful in the Lord. It doesn't matter where your um, geographical setting is. It doesn't matter what position you are in or what position you hold. It doesn't matter what your speech is like because God has a word to get through you to people that surround you in their terms. So he's not going to send um, Bill Gates out to the south side of Chicago to speak to the people because they're not going to relate to what he has to say. He has a group of people that he can speak to. And Paul had a group of people that God had sent him to. So that is our Sunday school. <laughs> I'm getting good at this a little bit, just a little bit because I am letting you out earlier and earlier. But I want you to be encouraged in this. And if you um, if you tune in, in in the next two weeks, I know you will, uh, we are going to be reading up until that point, Mark. And Marked is a um, Bible app uh, it's on the Bible app. It's a plan or a study. So if you go into uh, your plans, there should be like a menu uh, bar on the bottom and it should say plan. So if you read, if you open the plans button and search the plans, put in marked M-A-R-K-E-D by um, Pastor Michael Todd, Mike Todd. So you want to... Um, Search marked. It's a four day study and research that just like read through that for the four days. Or if you want to elaborate and do one per week, you have to do two. You have to do two per week in order for it to be ready for our mid month check. But I will post a picture on our social media, which I hope you're following by now because I keep plugging it. Um, <laughs> I will post a picture and then I'll put the link in our 
comment section or description section for this video for marked because we're going to be reading about purpose and praying about purpose and letting the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard our hearts in our season and in our circumstances so the peace works with the purpose the peace works in essence of you being in a position where no matter where you are, no matter what state of mind you in, you are in, no matter what state of um, and condition you are in, um, that you have the peace of God that is walking with you as you walk in purpose. So I hope you enjoyed Sunday school today. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and the weeks to come. And I will see you in two weeks for our mid-month check where we will be reviewing Marked by Mike Todd, which is the Bible. We, we will do the Bible app version. So if you do not have the One Bible or the Bible app on your phone, please download it. And then you'll look under plans for Marked by Mike Todd. Have a great day.